Okay, this is a lesson in the new, in the new unit, first lesson in the new unit on simplifying rational algebraic expressions. So we're going to ultimately get to solving rational algebraic equations, but we first got to deal with simplifying uh, algebraic expressions. Uh, remember, rational is going to be synonymous with fractions, so we're dealing with fractions here. Let's first uh, remind ourselves what we do to simplify rational numeric expressions, in other words, simplifying fractions. Uh, so what I want to do, if I have 48, 70 seconds, I want to identify the greatest common factor in the numerator and in the numerator and denominator, and then cancel that. And the remaining fraction is the simplified fraction. So if I have 48, 70 seconds, the greatest common factor is 24. So I'll cancel out that factor of 24 and of a simplified fraction of two thirds. And the next one, 196 to over 210, uh, I can realize that I have a common factor of 14, because 196 is 14 squared, and, and 210 is 14 times 15. So I cancel out my greatest common factor of 14, and I'm left with 14 fifteenths. Now, we've done some of this already in the exponents unit using quotient of powers with equal bases, et cetera. Um, so this part of it is can be considered a review, but we're going to get into more complicated uh, fractions that we need to simplify. So if I have 6x squared y um, divided by negative 12x squared y, again, when I identify the greatest common factor in the numerator and denominator, so the greatest common factor here is going to be 6 x squared y, so that's the entire numerator, and I'll just say times 1, and the denominator is 6x squared y. The remaining factors are, um, I think I'll use parentheses here since I have a negative, the remaining factors are negative 2x. So when I cancel out my greatest common factor, I'm left with 1 over 2x, usually customary to put the negative in the numerator or just out front there. In this next one, I have negative 42a a cubed b to the fourth over 7a squared b to the fifth. With a, I think with a, uh, we can inspect this and realize that uh, the greatest common factor is actually going to be 7a squared b to the fourth. Remaining factors in the numerator are, whoops, are negative 6a, and then in the denominator, I have my greatest common factor written there, and my only remaining factor is b. So when I cancel out my greatest common factor, I'm left with negative 6a over b. So let's go to some more complicated ones now. Uh, I, on this one, I have 3x squared minus 9x over 7x squared minus 21 over x squared. And you'll notice over here, I've said you can't cancel terms, so we just can't start canceling common uh, factors that we see because this is not in factored form because of these subtraction signs. So we've got to get this in factored form, then we can cancel common factors. So um, with this one, my, if I factor out the greatest common factor of the two terms in the numerator, I'll have 3x on the outside, and that will leave me with x minus 3 uh, as the remaining factors when I factor out the greatest common factor of 3x squared and minus 9x. I'm going to do the same thing in the denominator. I'm going to factor out a 7x squared. And that is going to leave me, so it's kind of a reverse distributive property, and that will leave me with x minus 3 over x minus 3. So you have these factors of 3 and x and x minus 3 in the numerator and 7 and x squared, x minus 3. So canceling that can go on, since everything's being multiplied here, you have an x and an x squared, so we have an extra x there. I can't do anything with the 7 and the 3. But I, can, but I can cancel out this factor of x minus 3. So what I'm left with is 3 over 7x. So in this next one, uh, you have 8 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. 
So if we just modify this, the denominator to kind of be in factored form, we can consider anything multiplied by one in factored form. And since the numerator has a factor of x minus one, that enables us to cancel the x minus ones, leaving us with a simplified fraction of eight, or eight over one or eight. So let's, uh, oops. Okay, so let's move on next to this one, three x three y squared plus twelve y over four y over four plus y. Um, it may be sometimes you have to just make little cosmetic changes, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and factor out a common factor of three y from the numerator, and I'll get y plus four. And I'm just going to reverse the use the unit property and just reverse the four and the y and say y plus four, and just call that multiplied by one. So now it's in factored form, and I can cancel out the y plus 4, so all this just simplifies to 3y. Now the next one, I have two trinomials over themselves. I need to factor both of those. Since the lead coefficient is 1, I can say factors in the numerator. I can say factors of 2 that sum to 3, and so that's 2 and 1. So I'm going to have x plus 2 times x plus 1. And the denominator, again, since I have a, a lead coefficient of 1, I can say factors of negative 2 that sum to positive 1. And so that would be x plus 2, x minus 1. I can cancel my common factor of x plus 2. And then what remains is the simplified fraction. Can't do any further canceling. So it's x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. All right, so the next one I'm looking at is 2x squared minus 8x over x squared minus 6x plus 8. So I would uh, want to factor the numerator. Common factor in, of those two terms is 2x. Now I have x minus 4. Factor the denominator, which factors the 8 that sum to negative 6, are x minus 4, x minus 2. I'll cancel out my common factors of x minus 4. Can't cancel this 2 because 2 is not a factor of the denominator, neither is x. So I'll have to leave it just like that, 2x over x minus 2. And in this one I have 30x squared minus 14x minus 8. And uh, so that's kind of a tricky one to factor in the numerator. And I have that all over, 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. So it might be, have one little trick you can do, since the denominator is easier to factor, that can help you possibly identify factors in the numerator. I have a lead coefficient of 3 here, so I can't say factors of 1 that sum to 4, but this is, I know I'm going to have 3x and x, and I've got to have plus and plus, uh, and I've got to have 1s here, so this factoring pretty much takes care of itself. Um, in the numerator, I think what I'm going to do is make the factoring a little simple, a little easier first. So I'm going to factor out a three. Uh, sorry, I'm going to factor out a common factor of two. So I have two, and then 15x squared minus 7x minus four. Now it's going to very much occur to me that one of the factors is 3x plus one in the numerator. Um, it's possible that x plus 1 could be a factor, but I'm going to try, uh, as I inspect this, 3x plus 1 and uh, in the numerator, and I think that's going to work out. In a, so let's go 3x plus 1 and then 5x minus 4, and I think that is going to be, so 15x squared minus 12. Actually, that's not it. Let me pause it and make sure I get the right factoring here. That is the right factoring, because that gets 12x uh, plus 5x or negative 7x, so that is the right factoring. So I have 3x plus 1 and x plus 1. And so I can cancel out that common factor right there, so that's all I can cancel. So I'm left with 2 times 5x minus 4 over x plus 1. 
So this next one's kind of a weird one. Uh, what I really have to do in this one is, um, uh, well, I think I, actually as I look at it, I, I've got a common factor in the uh, of this of the two terms in the numerator of four, and so that leaves me with x plus three in this term right here, and then when I factor out the four uh, in the second term, I'm left with a one, and the denominator I'm going to factor out a three. And I'm left with x plus 2 and a 2. So that ends up getting me 4 times x plus 4 over 3 times x plus 4. How convenient. And I'll cancel those out and I'll be left with 4 thirds. So um, in, the, in the next one, I've got all this. I'm going to have to do some factoring by grouping. I think you'll remember this technique. You just have to do it in both the numerator and denominator, which makes things a little more complicated. So let me rewrite the numerator and just show what I mean by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two terms. That's just using the associative property for addition. And group the second two terms. And I'll factor out a b from this first set of parentheses, and that will get me a plus 1. And then I'll factor out a 2 from that second set of parentheses, and I'll have an a plus 1. I'll factor out in the, in the, uh, in the first term of the, the first group in the, se in the denominator, I'm going to factor out an a, and that will give me a plus 1. And then I'll factor out a, I'm sorry, that'll give me a b plus 1. And then I'll factor out a, there's nothing I can really factor out there, so I'll say, I'll just factor out a 1 when you have that situation. So the greatest common factor in the numerator of these two big terms is a plus 1, so I'll factor that out, a plus 1, and I'll be left with b plus 2, and then I'll factor out a b plus 1, and I'll be left with an a plus 1. So the a plus 1's can cancel, and that'll leave me with a final simplified fraction of b over 2 over b plus 1. No more common factors, have to stop there. Alright, last page. Uh, I've got 6x minus 3y uh, over 3y minus 6x. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do there is factor out a 3 from the numerator. And that will give me 2x minus y. I'm going to factor out a, so I want to end up with 2x minus y, so I want to factor out a negative 3 out of the denominator, and that will give me, if I put the x term first, a 2x, and then that will have a minus y. So if you look at that closely in the denominator, everything pieces back together to be what it started, but... I've identified some really good common factors here. I cancel those out. I cancel the threes out, leaving a negative one behind. So it's one over negative one. So you just end up with negative one with all that. Now I warn you in the homework, I think there were three problems where you couldn't, you could maybe do a little factoring, but there were no common factors. So when you run into a situation where there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator, you just say it's simplified already, no canceling can occur. But I didn't have any, I don't think I have any examples in the, home, in the uh, notes here. All right, so this next problem, I'm going to factor the numerator, factor the denominator. The numerator factors a 2 that's summed to 3, so x plus 2, x plus 1. I'm going to factor out an x squared from the numerate from the from the both terms of the denominator and get x plus one. I've identified now a common factor of x plus one. That's all I can do with this one. I have x plus two over x squared. All right, we're getting there. Two more problems to talk about. I have 
3x squared minus 27 over x squared plus 3x minus 18. Let's do a lot of factoring. Let's factor out 3. I'll have x squared minus 9. And I'll factor out, uh, I'll factor, factor as a negative 18 that's summed to 3. So that would be plus 6x minus 3. Still got some factoring. That's the difference of two squares in the numerator. x minus 3, x plus 3. That's how x squared minus 9 factors. And then I have x plus 6, x minus 3. The x minus 3's cancel. And then that's all I can do. I have a final answer here of 3 times x plus 3 over x plus 6. Last one in the notes. I'm going to factor that numerator by grouping. Factor that difference of two squares. So in the numerator, I'll have xy plus 3y plus 3x plus 9. And I'll, fa I'll group that. The second two terms, factor the difference of two squares. Just like the last problem, that's x minus 3x plus 3. I'm going to factor out an x from these two. I'm sorry, factor out a y from those two terms. And I'll have x plus 3. I'll factor out a 3 from the second two terms. And I'll have x plus 3. I have x minus 3, x plus 3. I'll factor out my common binomial from these two terms of x plus 3. And I'll have y plus 3 over x minus 3 x plus 3. See this common factor of x plus 3 here. Final answer, y plus 3 over x minus 3. And that is the end of the notes.